Hi there, my name is Mike. I'm one of the pastors here at Living Hope Community Church. I want to thank you so much for joining us here today. I pray that you are equipped and encouraged today. Encouraged by the presence and the Word of God and equipped to live out the abundant life that Christ died to provide for you. Join us as we seek to know Him and to make Him known. Things up here, you're looking into. 
darkness falls that won't breathe in Cause the God I serve knows only how to try My God will never fail No, my God will never fail I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see
Good morning, everybody. I just wanted to welcome you here to our service this morning. I'm sitting here in the empty auditorium and I feel sad because it feels like it's been forever since we've been together. And we're not still sure when we are going to be, but I am happy that you guys are with us this morning and that you've been with us in this format over the last, uh, last couple of months. And hopefully it won't be for too much longer. But for more information on that, I do recommend that you take a look at Mike's video that he posted on Friday. He gives a lot of helpful information in terms of what's going on now and what the plan is going forward as we know it. So you can check that out. Also, uh, so announcements. So this week, some exciting news is starting June 9th. The office is officially open. So from eight till four, Tuesday to Friday, office hours are available. Uh, I know the staff is super excited to be able to see you guys face to face, to minister with you, to be able to pray with you in person. So come in and say hello and just try to connect with somebody. There will be social distancing measures in place but you'll be able to uh, to see everybody and like i said face to face connection which has been sorely missing over the over the last little while so that's very exciting news also coming up on friday night is the women's victorious conference so that is the service that we are having in place of the conference that was supposed to take place in person so that's friday night at 7 p.m you have a couple of girlfriends that you've been seeing that you want to get together with go ahead and do that and uh, it's a good way for us to just try to connect again uh, in in spite of these circumstances that we're able to still connect as women still connect through the message that I know that God has placed in Val's heart for each and every one of us and finally if you like what we're doing here and you want to be able to support our ministry the easiest way for you to do that is to send an e-transfer to give at livinghope-ca.org. So again, that's the easiest way to do it. And uh, yeah, so now we're just going to look forward to hearing a great message from Pastor Jordan. Thank you. Well, good morning. Thank you so much. Wasn't that an incredible worship set this, this morning? Why don't you just take a second wherever you are and just raise your hands. Why don't you just to begin to thank God that at the heart of worship, that it's about Him, that it's not about what I can do, what I see as valuable, how I can win this battle, that we would just take an opportunity, that we would just begin to thank Him. God, we thank You that You are victorious. We thank You that, that there's never a battle that You lose, that You are King on Your throne, that You are powerful, that You are mighty. And just take a second, why don't you just Praise with me. I know it's weird. What if you were at the grocery store and you're listening to this on your phone and you just happened to decide to, uh, to be clapping? You go ahead. Just clap. Just give a, give a praise. Say, God, man, you are awesome. Oh, man. Just give a praise. Well, he is good and he's in control. And I just wanted to talk to you about one thing today. I know I got five fingers up, but I'm talking about one thing. There's five scriptures that point uh, to this phrase, because I've been hanging out uh, on my phone recently a little bit more, probably because of the nature of this crisis and having to connect with people online a little bit more. But what I noticed when I was scrolling or when I was messaging people or I was on Facebook or whatever, I noticed this phrase and people would like post a selfie of them with a new hairstyle and the caption right at the bottom started with this, so I did a thing. Or they, they post and they have this, this brand new puppy that they're holding in their hands and they're petting and they're like, so I did a thing. And uh, even in my house, um, we over the season got an above ground pool for our girls in the backyard because we weren't sure if the pool was going to be open. And, uh, and we called the family just to share kind of what, what we're doing and uh, the excitement that our girls were having with the grandparents. And uh, we, I heard my wife go, so we did a thing. And immediately I was like, man, what's the thing? Well, I find that, that we, we say this, I did a thing because there's something new that's happening. And, uh, and so it began this like starting point for me to search the one thing that is important. Because we talk a lot about things that we do and that we, we want to experience. And, uh, and then there's, so what's the one thing that's important? Because 
what is important defines what really matters. And what really matters, what really matters determines the direction you go in life. Where you fix your focus is where you follow. And uh, I believe that what you fix your focus on, you know, is like, it's like the cat, the viral videos, you know, the one with the little laser beam where you sit and you play and you put the laser on the wall and that cat gets focused on it and it wants to get it and boom, it hits the wall and it falls behind the bed and you're sitting there laughing on your couch like I do when I see those things because their eyes are so focused on that laser that they didn't even realize what they were following. And the Bible has five scriptures that talk about one thing. So I'm not just talking about one thing, I'm talking about the phrase of one thing today. And uh, I think that these scriptures are valuable today in our current situation, in our current focus of our culture because there's been things this week there's been things in these last few months that have stolen your focus and maybe even trying to break your faith. And I believe that there's something at the heart of it all, this one thing. And I believe this message is here to help something, someone. This one thing is going to help you to pivot your perspective so you have a platform of praise. And I know that you're here with me now and I know, but I feel that you're not here with me now, but I feel that God's presence is here in this house and that he's wanting to do something because the same presence that is here is where you are at right now. And I believe that God is going to meet you right where you are. And I believe that he's going to shift and change things right in your circumstances. So let's pray and let God do the one thing he needs to do in our lives. Father, I thank you. I thank you that you are a good God. I thank you that you are in control of all things. Father, I just pray that as, as we share together a thought about who you are, that the knowledge of who you are will shift how we're feeling in our current circumstances about the one thing that we're focused on. Amen. So like I said, I found these one thing phrases in the Bible and five, five important verses that in a lot of ways I didn't realize were stories that I know from the Bible and helped shape my faith, but I didn't realize there was this one thing phrase in all of them. And uh, it starts off in Psalm 27, 4, where we read this phrase. One thing I have asked of the Lord that I would seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. That psalm was written by a guy named King David. The guy experienced so many things. And although David could have wanted many things in his life, he could have wanted victory over his enemies because he fought in a lot of wars. He could have wanted a crown on his head because as a young boy, he was anointed by God to be king over Israel. But yet it was years of isolation and shepherding sheep in fields before God even gave him a crown. And even the king that was above him wanted to kill him when he found out God's purpose. And so although David wanted these many things, we see him in this psalm relentlessly return his focus to God. David sought God more than any earthly treasure. And I wonder, are there things that you are seeking in this season after more than God? I was challenged in my own walk as in the nature of this season, I feel like I should have more time. But in the time that I'm taking I'm, I'm doing a thing or something new. And it's not that it's bad. It's that maybe those things are actually stealing my focus from the very thing that God has given me the ability to do, which is to be in his presence and to ask and to seek God in his holy temple. And so David talks about this one thing that he asks for. 
is that he'd be in God's presence, that he'd be in worship and prayer and close with God. The next scripture that you find, we find this one phrase found in Mark 10, 21. And it's one thing you lack. Jesus is talking to a rich young ruler who uh, saw himself and claimed to be righteous. He was following all the rules. He was doing all the right things. And uh, Jesus, looking at him, it says in Mark 10, 21, Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, you lack one thing. You lack one thing. Go and sell all you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come, follow me. You see, the rich young ruler was willing to impress Jesus with his status, with the things that he could do. And I know that uh, I have been in the rich young ruler's shoes before. Hey, look at what I'm doing. I'm serving at camp in the summer. I'm looking after kids. You see what I'm doing? I'm doing all the right things. But Jesus goes and recognizes that this rich young ruler was so focused on his status and his unwillingness to surrender it that he calls him out on it. He says, here's the one thing you lack. And I wonder, what's maybe one thing that God is asking you to surrender to him? And so we see things show up with David in the Psalms where He has one thing I ask. And then we see in Mark with Jesus, the one thing you lack. And next we see some of Jesus' good friends on earth, Mary and Martha. And we read about it in Mark, or sorry, in Luke 10, 41 and 42. Jesus is an unexpected guest at Martha's house. And immediately her response is to begin to make something for Jesus, to make a meal, to do something for him. And the one thing that we find in this scripture is one thing is necessary. There are things that God calls us to do, things that are important to him. And, he's, and while all of this is going on in Luke 10, 41, this is what we read. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. But one thing is necessary. One thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. Because you see, Martha was upset that she was doing stuff and her sister was just sitting in God's presence. Well, if you knew Mary's reason for being in God's presence, well, she was tormented by demons and she was bothered and Jesus set her free from these demons. And so she understood, wow, this is the person I want to be with. This is the one that brings me freedom. And so Mary sits at Jesus' feet responding and Jesus responds to the complaint about her frustration about Mary sitting at Jesus' feet by saying, you're anxious and troubled with much serving. Mary was, Martha, not Mary, sorry. Martha was so focused on doing good things that she missed out on the best things. There's this quote by a famous speaker. His name is Craig Groeschel. Uh, I love the way he thinks about leadership and leadership podcasts and everything that he does. You ever want to learn about leadership? Craig Groeschel is an incredible person. Right now I'm reading a book by him called Dangerous Prayers. And uh, one of the quotes says this, eliminate the stuff that doesn't matter. So you can pursue the things that really do. And I really believe that this is like what Jesus was saying. One thing is necessary, Martha. You you need to eliminate the stuff that doesn't matter in order to pursue the things that really do. And uh, so one thing I ask. And so there's one thing you lack. And then there's one thing that is necessary. And the next one, I believe, is significant to the structure and sustainability of our witness as believers. Because it's this phrase, one thing I know. There's a lot of questions 
in culture today. And people are asking people things. People are questioning what's going on, what they believe at the root and at the heart of everything, at the heart of it all. What is it? What is it that you really know? And uh, there's a guy in John 9.25. He had been blind since birth. Blind since birth. And, uh, and Jesus comes and he heals this person. And the, the Pharisees are upset. They're going like, okay, Jesus heal you on the Sabbath. Like this is an issue. There's, there's like this whole, he's being interrogated because Jesus asks him to bring an offering to the place. Like go show yourself, show them that you've been healed and make an offering to the Lord. And uh, this man born blind is being interrogated by religious leaders and he doesn't present a well-prepared speech or get intimidated. He simply tells his story. And in John 9, 25, he answers, whether he is a sinner, I, I, I don't know. One thing I do know is that though I was blind, now I see. And a lot of times there are things that we don't realize are we've been blind to. And I mean, relevant to today, I mean, I, I'm challenged by this. Some of my friends and the things that I've said uh, help bring to light that maybe, maybe you actually have a hard heart, Jordan. And in my wrestle with God, God's like, let me, let me soften your heart. Let me, let me sh show you how to understand another person's pain. We have such a diverse church and we have such a diverse culture in a church. And I love that God gives us an opportunity and a platform here to, to understand that it's not just your attendance that matters. You being online, wh whatever culture you're from, whatever background of life you're from, whatever experiences you have in life that have brought you to this point where you're here, it's not about your attendance and a number. To us, it's about addressing a real issue, a real hurt, a real pain that maybe has been there for years. And this blind person for years was blind. And God, in his compassion, was moved to heal the pain. We see Jesus doing this continuously. He's moved with compassion. And I was challenged that one thing I know is that though I was broken, Jesus healed me. Though I was hurting and in pain and my responses were out of pain, God wanted to come and heal my heart. So the issue was knowing God. And the last one thing that I found that I found really valuable to me was this one thing I do. We see this guy named Paul. Now Paul was an apostle and he was a person that built the church and he spread it from the beginnings he, he grew the church. He was the Pharisee of Pharisees who had everything going for him and he laid it down to follow the life of Jesus. And he experienced a lot of pain. And his whole past is, is coded. And as you read about him through, through Acts and as you read about him through his life, you see there are things that happen to him that are not comfortable. And... The Apostle Paul was writing to this church in Philippi and he says this in Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing, say it, one thing. Hit your buddy if they're zoning out. Hey, this is one thing. This is important. One thing I do. Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus, to the calling that God has placed on my life. And a lot of times we can end up having the baggage of our past become our focus. But if I'm trying to move forwards and I'm looking backwards, well, in the nature of where I'm standing here, well, this is the edge of the stage. But if I had been so focused on what's behind me and I wasn't thinking about what was in front of me, I would have just ended up, you know, whoo, off stage. 
But that's not the reality because I have this forward focus. I have fixed my eyes on what's in front of me. And Paul was talking about, I know that my past could really challenge me. But this one thing I do, this action, is that I turn my focus from not what's beside me to the left or to the right. No, I fix my eyes on the author, he says, and the perfecter of his faith later in this book. Because Paul, in, in his conversation with the Philippians, even as we read at the beginning, it's really unique. Because he has this moment in chapter one, he says, what really matters when people are sharing the gospel and sharing the truth of who Jesus is. And uh, he coins this word, and obviously we can't read it in English, but, but in, the, in the Greek, in Hebrew, what we read is, is this phrase, apo kara dok, dokia. And it's, it's a joined word. It's like he created this word. It's a unique word. And this is what it means. Apo means to turn, to turn. And so like turn, turn away, to turn our focus towards. Kara, our head. And Dokia, and it's like to stretch forwards. Now, Paul was in prison and he was in prison while he wrote a lot of these letters to the church of Philippi, to the church of Ephesus, to the church of Galatia, all these different letters that he wrote. And he's saying, hey, there's something really important right now that you need to understand. I know that there's one thing that you're focused on. I know that there's one thing that's really bothering you. But I want you to turn away from that. And I want you to put your head forwards. And I want you to lean towards the goal, which is God's calling. And what I love about these one things, these five verses highlight five different people from five very different walks of life. And yet each point to the same lesson. And it's this, that knowing God is at the heart of it all. Knowing God is at the heart of it all. With David, we see that knowing God is at the heart of prayer and worship. The one thing. And with the rich young ruler, the one who had it all together, we see that knowing God is at the heart of surrender. When I really surrender my life, it's, it's not out of intention to do good things. It's to know the one who, who calls me to do good things. And then we see Martha who is doing good things. And yet we see that knowing God is at the heart of service. And with the blind men, when we share our faith, that knowing God is at the heart of witness. Hey, when someone asks a tough question, uh, that we just started a series with our youth called Youth Alpha. Incredible opportunity. And yes, this is sort of a plug. But the reality of it is that knowing God is at the heart of witness. And you're allowed to ask questions. And you might not have all the answers, and that's okay. But when you approach a person's question with the heart to learn rather than pretend like you know, when you seek to know who God is and his character together, there's something so valuable that happens. You turn from a Martha who's just doing to a Mary who is now in God's presence, just absorbing who, every bit of who God is. And so that knowing God is at the heart of witness. One thing I do know is that I was blind and now I see. And Paul, with Paul we understand even just hearing with this one thing I do, is that knowing God is at the heart of ambition. I want to do this. This is the next step I want to take. This is the next thing I want to do in life. But if I don't know God, all these steps are in vain. The Bible says, in a, man, uh, in, in a man's heart, he plans his ways, but the Lord directs his footsteps. And I believe even last week, as Mike shared, and there was something about God's healing being released, we're, we've been believing and praying for months for God to just begin 
an outpouring of healing. And I'm not just talking physical healing. I'm talking spiritual healing. I'm talking emotional healing. I'm talking about full healing to the body of Christ and to those that God created, not just those that come to church. And I believe that when Mike's like, hey, place your hand on the area of hurt. Some of you, it might have been your heart. Some of you, it might be your thoughts. Some of it might actually be physical. Some of you, you might not even be able to put hands on a kidney or, or on, on a lung or, or whatever on, your, on, on the muscles and tendons. But God wants to bring healing in Jesus' name because it says, by Jesus' stripes we are healed. And we believe this in this church. But this comes out of knowing God. I know that because Jesus did this, that I have an opportunity for healing. But without, the only way to know God is through the Holy Spirit. And the only way to receive the Holy Spirit is through believing that Jesus has come and died and raised from the grave. And maybe there's one thing that you have going on in your life. But our lives need to be singularly focused on Jesus. Because Jesus did that with God. Jesus was singularly focused on God his entire life. He only said what he, he heard the Father saying. He only did what he saw the Father doing. And uh, there's this moment in John where Jesus is on the cross and in his last breaths before he dies, there is Mary and there is Martha and there is the beloved disciple all at the cross. And Jesus, even in his dying breaths, was moved with compassion to see our one thing. He saw that his motherly earth, motherly earth, (laughs) her earthly mother, was losing a son. She was experiencing pain. And Jesus, even though on a cross, because if I was in pain, the last thing I'd be thinking about is the people around me. I'd be like, this hurts. How do I fix it? And Jesus, in the midst of his pain, sees his mom and sees the one thing that she's struggling with, and he addresses it. He goes, today, this is your son. And to, to John, the beloved sister, and this is your mom. He has a compassion to see the one thing that she's struggling with and an ability to hear God and still, even in his last breaths, bring life and change into a person's life. I don't know what you're experiencing. I don't know what you're feeling. I don't know if it's what you've got your focus on. Is it not having a job right now because of the current situation of employment? Is it your finances and and what they look like? Is it How you're feeling internally, is it sickness or disease that's got you struggling? You're just focused on how am I going to, how am I going to cope with this today? Is it your thought process and the things that you're doing? I'm just focused on pleasing people. Because knowing God is at the heart of it all. And because of Jesus dying on a cross, when we choose to have a relationship with Jesus, when we choose to believe that he died, came to earth, lived a perfect sinless life in place of our broken lives so that we could receive the ability to connect and as David did, ask of God, but receive from God too because Jesus died on a cross so that we may receive the Holy Spirit. Because when he died and he rose again, when we believe that he didn't just die, that he's not just a human that lived on earth, that he was God in human form who paid the price and died and rose again and is now seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding on our behalf. God's literally where you're at right now and whatever one thing you're struggling with, the same way that he interceded on the cross is interceding in your life where you are going, God, would you help them with this one thing? And if you're listening to this today and there's one thing that's just taken your focus 
and trying to break your faith, I want to pray with you. And if you're here today in this Jesus that you're hearing of that decided to come to earth and live a life so that you may have freedom from this one thing to experience the one thing that we all crave, which is the knowledge of God, knowing God, who he is and how he is part of our lives. I want to invite you to pray with me today. So wherever you're at, I want you to pray this prayer with me. God, I know you're real. I believe you sent your son Jesus to die for my one thing, my sin, my brokenness. I believe that you died and that you were raised to life and that I have the opportunity to be raised to life from my dead and broken circumstances. Today, I choose to follow you to walk out of death and brokenness and walk in life and fullness of joy. Today, I receive you into my life. Would you transform my mind? Would you change the way I live as I follow you? Amen. And so today, as we finish each story is about not being distracted by aims or money or serving or fear or our past, but being completely centered on Jesus. And as you go this week and as you seek to follow him, I pray that your heart is filled with joy, with purpose, with love. And as you fix your eyes on him, would you receive the one thing that our soul truly longs for? him, a provider who makes us complete. Thanks for joining us today. I want to thank you so much for joining us here today. If you want to stay connected with us throughout the week, you can go on our website, which is www.livinghope-ca.org. You can also check out our Facebook and our Instagram accounts. We believe that God has something unique to say to you today, to encourage you, to bless you. And we hope that you feel his love today stronger than you ever have. We want to also partner with you and, and help you. And so if there's any way that we can pray with you, if it's in response to this message or for anything going on in your life, we would love to pray with you. And so please email us to amen at livinghope-ca.org. Make sure you include your name and your phone number. And we would love to be in touch with you and to pray with you and to see God move in your life. Have a wonderful day and God bless.